So uh, I have Shashank with me. For those of you who don't know him already, he's uh, uh, a unicorn founder. Can I call you that? Is it disrespectful? Yeah. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, so unicorn founder. Okay. Anyway, so he he's the founder of Practo. It's a it's one of the uh, companies that uh, grew from a college and you know it's uh, one of the largest healthcare technology company. Uh, so first question for you, Shashank, uh, is is Practo a, a tech company or is it a healthcare company? Um, so. Uh, so good evening, everyone. Welcome back from the refreshing tea break. We've um, we've always seen ourselves as a technology. No, we we are a technology company focused on healthcare. So our main goal is to enable all the other players in the healthcare ecosystem. I think there are already some fantastic hospitals. There are fantastic diagnostic centers. There are fantastic pharma companies out there. There are fantastic insurance companies out there. We don't need one more. We need them to work together better. Um, and that's that's the role that we play. So we believe in being a technology focused company, but we will continue to work hard in the healthcare space. So more like a platform which kind we'll of brings all of them platform. together, right? Okay. So from this vantage point, you uh, <clears throat> you meet with a lot of doctors. You meet a lot a lot of healthcare professionals. And now you're going abroad, and you know uh, you're setting up places there. You have a lab in the Silicon Valley, is that right? Okay. So uh, you, you're looking at you know a lot of these new uh, uh, technologies coming into the space. Uh, from your viewpoint, how do you see jobs changing? You know, uh, and where do you see disruption coming from? So you know, uh, I think there are multiple ways in which healthcare is getting impacted. The first one is uh, I think Nandan spoke about platformization. Platformization removes uh, bring, removes the information asymmetry that exists and helps in meeting uh, demand and supply. So I think as our role exists um, as a platform, our goal is to make sure that the overall, overall pie of healthcare increases. So hospitals are able to get more patients, uh, you know, doctors are better served. So from that point of view, a platform ensures that there's better meet or meeting of demand and supply. And through that, we are able to actually increase, by increasing the demand, we are able to increase supply as well. So I think in the future, we'll see a lot more, uh, you know, uh, you know, doctors coming uh, coming into the fold, and them being able to, you know, rapidly, you know, speed up, come to speed more easily. That's, that's platformization. The other thing that um, is getting a lot more, uh, especially in technology, is the real-time healthcare. Today, with sensors sitting in each of our pockets, um, and each one of us having one in the pocket, one on our wrist, is sending a lot of data. Now, as time progresses, we'll be able to collect a lot more data about our health. And that's going to make healthcare less episodic and more real time. And when healthcare becomes more real time, you'll actually be spending, you know, um, I think equally um, on healthcare, and the ecosystem will change uh, to that degree. So that I think that the sensor sensors coming in will change the way uh, healthcare progresses. I think apart from these two, uh, AI and um, machine learning, many of them spoke about, you know, there's a real question whether, you know, will we ever see a future where without you know, doctors? Definitely, AI and uh, machine learning will be assist will start will be assisting doctors. Is doing it today, but with vision support systems in place, it will be assisting doctors even more. But I think what will start happening is democratization of doctors' experience will start happening. So the information today, a doctor is, a, you know, a lot of data points, and the reason he, you know, as with time he gets better is because he's able to gather more and more data points. And of course, skill is a huge um, addition on top of that. What, what if we are able to use that, that data and democratize it? So somebody who is graduating can make benefit of the data that other doctors have. That way, you know, that democratization of that data will, uh, will actually make doctors even better. And so I, I believe that with, um, with, with these three things of platformization, with uh, sensors, as well as with, uh, the, um, we'll be able to see a lot more changes in healthcare. So, uh in in the healthcare space, uh, how many jobs are we talking about? Ballpark, let's say in India, how many doctors? You know, how many healthcare professionals? How many nurses? How many people are assisting them? Uh, what are we talking about here? So, in, you know, the number of doctors in India that's easy. That there's a million registered doctors in India. Um, along with them, we see close to about a million alternate medicine. Um, you know, where there's homeopathy, Ayurveda, Udani, etc. And then there are preventive healthcare where physiotherapists. Um, you know, there are, so there are probably these are the three big segments uh, where you have the largest employment in, um, and then there are there's the assisted healthcare where you have, we have nurses, uh, people who work in hospitals, uh, hospital operations. So these are the these are the four. Uh, I think the overall total would be anywhere between uh, you know three to maybe five million people. 
So, uh, <clears throat> out of these three to five million people, when you say you see uh, yourself in increasing the pie of you know healthcare, the availability of healthcare, uh, you're probably talking about going to rural areas. You're probably talking about you know uh, people spending more on healthcare in the coming days. You know. Uh, because of li uh, our lifestyles are changing and those kinds. Uh, but you know, how do you see this growing in the next five years or so? Yeah, that's a great question. So, our, our, I think as a platform, um, and and not just uh, our, but I think the in in the industry, the the need is how do we make healthcare far more accessible to people? And if we can make healthcare more accessible, how can we ensure that people are able to use healthcare more often? Today, there's a lot of inconvenience when you need to use healthcare, uh, and I think the healthcare providers are also you know trying their best. To be able to uh, you know accommodate the needs of uh, consumers, there's still a lot of drag. Um, you know, when you need to meet a provider, you, you need to go through so many loops to meet a provider. So by removing the inconvenience, how can we make consumers be able to access healthcare more often and very conveniently? Through that, we believe that the number of appointments per person, you know, or number of visits a, a person does, will increase. Not because the person is. Uh, needs them but from a preventive point of view the person is able to do more visits and so when that starts happening you are now able to provide supply with more amount of demand and uh, and through that we'll be able to you know generate more um, uh, more supply on the platform itself mm -hmm. so uh, there was a famous uh, silicon valley vc uh, who said you know 80% uh, of uh, doctors will be replaced yeah. by you know uh, uh, by ai and you know those kinds uh, what is your take on that um, I think there's um, there's India and then there's the rest of the world and uh, the rest of the world is definitely facing slightly more difficult uh, problems um, in the sense that the, the problems that they are facing is more around affordability. Uh, the cost of healthcare, healthcare is going up significantly and that's where I, I, I believe um, AI can play a huge role in automating many of the basic things um, and reducing costs. Um, so uh, that's one area where um, where in the, in the western world um, the second part is in the Western world, dig digitalization is far, you know, has been happening for the last 30, 40 years. So the data that they have is, you know, a lot more through which the ability to actually provide better diagnosis is possible. And hence, these are the two parts in which technology plays a role. The part about replacing a doctor is something I think is a far more uh, far-fetched one because there is the need, uh, human uh, you know, interaction that's required. So I, I believe um, AI and machine learning will be, will help a doctor take a better decision will definitely, I think, I think that's where it will go. But the other two things that will definitely solve AI and the machine learning in the Western world will be around costs and will be around better quality in terms of uh, diagnosis. Mm -hmm. in, in terms of getting, you know, uh, access to healthcare and, you know, how big a barrier is that uh, from a cost point of view, from an India point of view, we already have the cheapest medicines in the world, you know, we already have the cheapest heart surgery in the world, you know. How much more can you optimize? <laughs> um, it is it is it is great that India you know is, is a land which um, has probably you know we are blessed for the healthcare we have. Um, you know the providers are fantastic, and like you mentioned, cost especially in uh, in urban India is, is not a problem. I think that there are two parts which uh, which we could do better in. The first one is around if you talk about urban India, which is you know there, there are two Bharats and the first Bharat. Uh, the real problem there is around insurance. Um, how are we able to actually, you know, only 60 million Indians have insurance and how and, and the ability for uh, for consumers to get healthier is to better insurance. So that's the problem that one faces um, in the urban sectors. But the real problem of affordability comes in in the, uh, in the rural sectors where the number of doctors to patients ratio is very large, very wide. Data that we have uh, is very clear which shows that in the urban setups, there is a 30% doctor base who ha who are overbooked and who are you know who have a lot of uh, you know, huge waiting lines, but 70% of doctors in urban India still have a lot of available time, which we are trying to uh, you know which can be filled up through you know telemedicine and many other uh, mechanisms of filling up doctors' time. But in rural India, the doctor to patient ratio is very wide. And there, accessing a doctor is you know, almost uh, a very difficult task. And then you put in the layers of quality, then you put in the layers of you know, diagnostic ability in those locations, it gets very difficult. Um, so I think the question is really in India, especially on accessibility, is towards uh, the rural setups. Mm -hmm. And, and <clears throat> if I may, uh, how does Practo and you know, companies like yours that sit at the intersection, 
go into these rural areas because our mode of contact with you know doctors and patients is through apps and data and those kinds right and you know this is we are quite starved on that front in rural uh, india right yeah uh, it's a fair point uh, i think it's going to uh, replicate what we are seeing in urban india where in urban india what we are what we are seeing is a uh, couple of actions are now becoming far more digitalized in healthcare the first one is uh, just the ability to just book uh, an appointment tele consultations are rising in uh, in urban india ordering medicines online is on the rise in urban india uh, being able to do checkups at home is on the rise in urban india so these are the three four very simple use cases that are getting digitalized in urban india i think the similar pattern will take place in uh, rural india largely because uh, in 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 the rural setups the same mobile infrastructure and uh, internet is going to you know help uh, help them but at this stage um, where we are I, i think even the urban setups the penetration of digital health is just very minimal uh, it's just about it's just started so that's where it, it takes place the one of the things that we have seen in healthcare is the adoption of digital health by the consumer is also dependent on the adoption of of digitalization of the supply so just like uh, in in you know just like in um, in a marketplace like flipkart or in a marketplace uh, like ola you need the drivers and the suppliers to be technology enabled it's really important that that the doctors and the hospitals and the clinics and the diagnostic centers and the pharmacies are technology enabled till you get there it was very difficult to change the behavior of the the, the consumer so in tier 2 markets and tier 3 markets the real challenge that lies is how do you actually get them to be digitalized if you don't bring them onto the platform or rather to any digital platform then you will not be able to change consumer behavior um so that chicken and egg problem lies in the uh, in the tier 2 markets which uh, i'm sure the platforms like ours and yeah. others will try to solve yeah uh, great point uh, i just have uh, you know a slightly different question in in the future uh, what kind of jobs do you see uh, that don't exist now that are likely to be created oh. in your space oh, yeah i think one of the things that i'm uh, uh, very optimistic about is healthcare has you know one of the things that healthcare hasn't had is our engineers our developers right in every sector um, you know engineers and developers have had a role to play and i think in healthcare and uh, i believe that when when we can make a healthcare a far more open system an open system more engineers more developers can actually get access to supply to data and they can start building things right so imagine if we have millions of uh, coders actually coding for better health the ability for our niche problems of somebody having an asthma problem or somebody having a breathing difficulty or somebody having a more let's say in a particular part of a, in india there's a particular particular disease that's going on the interest of somebody to solve that problem can happen through code so the hope is that with an open healthcare system we'll i mean uh, with a with a much more open system around the health tech platforms we'll be able to inspire people analysts and data uh, data experts as well as uh, coders to actually develop for the healthcare fantastic i think uh, we are about to run out of time i just have a quick question uh, with this whole wearables and you know uh, devices coming into play and you mentioned preventive healthcare you know uh, uh, does it uh, uh, and then uh, there's this uh, need for engineers to come in there and data scientists to innovate on top of that a uh, lot of the innovation that you see now in the iot space have a lot of healthcare connection devices that help you sleep better the devices that help you know walk better and those kind um do you see uh, india uh, at some point being able to lead you know some of these innovations uh, because you know we've been lagging on many fronts right like digitization and you know and is there a role that startups and companies like you can play uh, in creating this ecosystem yeah, I, i mean two part question i think first one i think india is fantastic in digital op- adoption right i mean uh, you know we we are the country which adopted aadhaar faster than anybody else in the world uh, i think 6 years or lesser so as a country uh, you know of course government back but it you know we are as a country i think we adopt digital really good so that's a good news in terms of uh, uh, in terms of uh, in terms of the wearable wearables i think our my our, our view point is largely around wearables are a, i think the wearables will be able to give real time data and so doctors will will be on subscription okay their uh, con- consumers will consume healthcare as a subscription and it will not be episodic uh, you know you will have a subscription of different doctors or you know conditions or 
aspirations, etc. So there will be subscriptions, it won't be today I want this, it will be I always need this. And doctors will call patients up rather than patients calling doctors up. And so wearables as well as uh, um, devices will result in creating that economy uh, of actually um, having a more real time healthcare. Uh, so that's where I think wearables will go. If if you're able to standardize things and provide it in a in a in a in a, in a mechanism that doctors can consume, we can actually get doctors and others to actually call us up versus us having to call them up. 